Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Alone Fox, and today I have such an exciting video because I have been wanting to collaborate with one of my favorite content creators here on YouTube with Wendy for so long. We've actually been in talks of collaborating for probably over a year now. We were gonna collaborate right before COVID hit um, when she came to Los Angeles. However, just with our schedules and stuff, it didn't end up working out, and then COVID happened. She lives in Canada, all that form of stuff, and today is finally the day where I'm collaborating with with. Wendy. Hi, my name is Wendy here on YouTube known as with Wendy and on my channel we do all sorts of DIY sewing, thrift flips, making things from scratch. It is a great place to start if you want to up your game and sew some of your own clothes. You guys definitely need to check her out and I will link her channel in the description box below because we also created a second video over on her channel where she taught me a DIY skill that I have never done before and in today's video I am teaching her a DIY skill that she has never done before. So so it sounds pretty simple, however, there's a very big twist. We are only going to be able to listen to each other while creating these projects. So I'm not gonna be able to see what Wendy is doing and she's not gonna be able to see what I am doing over on her channel. And yes, we did take notes from the Bon Appetit back-to-back -back chef. I absolutely love that series. Wendy actually introduced me to it um, about a year ago when we came up with this concept. I'm going to be sharing with her how to create a really cute, simple macrame shelf. I wanted something a little bit complex, something that she can use power tools and also having to learn how to do macrame just by hearing seems a little bit challenging so we'll see how I do but I guess we should honestly go ahead I'm going to call Wendy and we can jump right in hi Wendy hi Drew oh my gosh I'm so excited and also a little bit nervous about this yeah because yeah you made me whip out the drill I'm scared I know yeah you told me you're like I've never really whipped out the drill and I was like okay well we're gonna be whipping out the drill today currently we can see each other but we're gonna lower the camera or lower the screen in a second to where we can't see each other and then I'm going to be teaching <laughs> Wendy how to create a macrame hanging shelf basically only audio. Yeah, I mean, I guess should we just get started? Okay, lead the way, Drew. Uh, okay, okay, let me go um, and pull my screen down. Okay, I'm gonna hide you. Okay, so I know that your board is a little bit thicker than mine. If you have your ruler, mm -hmm. can you just tell me how wide your board is? Yes. Even when it's a one by six, it's always shorter for some reason. I don't know why they call them. Lies, it's just lies. It's Five just a and lie. a half, just lies, and it's like point like it's three quarters inch tall. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. Can you like draw out a three and a half inch section in the middle of the board? Does that make sense? So there's probably just gonna be one inch, maybe draw a one inch line in from either edge. Uh -huh. That way we're drilling in the same section, if that kind of okay, makes sense. Okay, so the sh along the short edge, I'm gonna come in one inch. Yes. Okay, I'm making my board skinnier. Yes, you're making your board skinnier. You're not gonna cut it, but you're just gonna use these lines as reference for drilling. Cause we're gonna drill first and then we're gonna paint after. Done. Perfect, okay. So then we basically both have three and a half inch boards, even though yours is a little wider. And we're gonna mm -hmm. start by using our drill with a drill bit that will allow our macrame cord to go through it. Keeping in mind okay. that only one cord will go through your hole. So you don't need it wide enough for two or anything like that. Okay. Um, so just like probably about half an, half of an inch from either end, we're gonna wanna drill through this section, but you're gonna want six holes on either end across your three and a half inch section that you drew. Does that make sense? Okay, so I take my three and a half inch section and I divide it into six holes. Yes. How one. far in are the holes from the edge? Um, I probably did about like half of an inch. Lots of sawdust will be formed. Okay, okay. I am excited because I do have a cute little clamp, so. Oh wow, Even you're a professional. You are a professional. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm scared. Power tools still scare me a little bit. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna make some drilling noises. Okay. Okay, so you did one side correctly. I did or one not side. Correctly. That you is did correct. one side correct. <laughs> Here we go. Mine looks so bad with me. I think it's fine. I thought I would be able to freeze How is it that it looks better? Yours is that looks the power better. Of experience. 
It looks better this time and I didn't draw markings. What the heck? My, my sides look so bad. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck is that? Ah! What the fuck is that? I'm so now that we have our board, now we're gonna paint our board, whatever color you wanna do. Um, I'm gonna do black. I'm gonna do matte black too. Nice. Matte black? Oh, I have a matte black as well. Yep, matte finish. It's called Noir. So I'm gonna start. All right. Just make sure when you kind of go over your holes that you don't have a ton of paint on your brush so it's not like filling in your holes. Yeah, okay. And to stir my paint, I never get stir sticks. I just use the takeout chopsticks that come with food. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> Wait, Drew, I want you to tell me more about what you studied in school. Oh yeah, okay, so so I actually applied, I went to FITM, the Fashion Institute, Whoa. Um, in downtown Los Angeles, yes. and I applied actually to be a fashion designer. Like I wanted <gasps> to be the one that designed all the clothing. That's like what I wanted to do was fashion design. Yes. But I kind of realized after I started that I just didn't, I don't know, I, I wasn't as good of a sewer as I thought. And what? like, it just like, I just, I actually switched my major to be a, in product development, okay. which was more of the technical side. So it was more of like creating tech packs and like doing all the measurements. I love making stuff. That's my favorite thing. Like my first ever YouTube channel was a scrapbooking channel. Um, and I had, I would make scrapbooks and cards and albums and like this and that. And I always loved doing it. And then I went to school and I wasn't able to bring all my supplies with me because I ended up like living in a dorm basically. Mm -hmm. It didn't have any of my, like any space, you know? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I started doing fashion because I was able to store clothing. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit easier for me and it was for fun sure. at the time. And, but I just always missed the creative element of everything because I, of course you could like DIY your clothing and stuff, but I just like, I wasn't really a fan of making clothes. I more so liked making like decor and more crafty stuff, you know? Yeah. So that's why I created Lone Fox. Well, okay, so I guess we will break for a little bit. I'll let you paint and then just message me when you're done painting and it's all dry and we can work on the next steps. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, all right, bye. Bye for now. All right guys, so we are back. Um, our wood has now dried. We added our paint to it and you're good, Wendy, on your side, right, as well? Mm-hmm, I'm ready. Okay, so now we're gonna do the actual macrame part. So we're gonna grab our macrame cord. Okay. We're basically gonna wanna cut two pieces at about seven feet in length. So you're gonna want two seven foot sections. Okay. I have a nice tape measure that I'm gonna lay on the ground. Ooh. Got them and I will go get my latch hook tool. Coming up through the bottom, you're gonna put your your string through the third hole. The third hole on either side, it doesn't matter. Basically, we're gonna be having both ends of one piece of the cording coming out of the two middle holes. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, you might be able to just put it right through. My macrame cord is a little bit like, um, it's not like woven very tightly, so it's kind of like a, a yarn, you know, where it kind of like unravels as I work with it. I'm like stabbing it through with a scissor. Okay, so you have it, you have it through the two center holes, yes. correct? With the strands coming upwards. Yes. Okay, so then we're gonna cut two more pieces and cut these ones at about 10 feet in length. 10 feet. You're gonna need two of them, so they're gonna go on the two ends. I can do this, whoa. Are you video somewhere? Yeah, I said I was looking at the camera looking like this. I'm just gonna apologize. This is so hard to explain. Um, and okay, the, basically the farther it is from the middle, you want it to be taller. Yes, because all the knotting is gonna be happening with the farthest out strands. Does that make sense? So then the, the strands in the center are all just going to be like just there, but all the knotting is gonna happen with the two strands farthest out. This is my first macrame. Oh, really? I've never bought macrame cord before. I feel like this is something you so would have done before for some reason. I know. I think maybe because of the tapestries and stuff, I feel like you would have done something similar. So now we're gonna start the macrame. Now there's only one knot that you have to do for the entire process and then it's just repetitive, but it's really quick. So you could honestly probably finish the shelf from now on for in like an hour if you wanted to. Okay. Um, okay, so you're gonna take your right strand, the outermost right strand, and then pass yep. it over the top of the four. So it's like laying over the top, if you could okay. imagine that. Okay. And then you're gonna grab your left strand and go over the tail of your right strand and then underneath 
the four strands. Does that make sense? Okay, I go, the, fir the right one went over its three left neighbors. Uh, it should be its four left neighbors. You're gonna have your left strand, your right strand, and then the four center ones are kind of just gonna be together in a cluster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then your right strand, your right strand's gonna go, oh. you're gonna go over, over the all top four. of four center strands. Yep. Oh, okay. And then your left strand's going to go over the top of the tail where you just put it, like where your right strand went over the top. You see how it's kind of mm -hmm. like off to the side now? Yeah. Like the tail of it, you're gonna put your left strand over the top of the tail, underneath the four strands, and then back up through the loop uh, yes. that you created. I have done this knot before. Yes, it's just a, it's basically a square knot. So you're gonna do that, that what you just did right there, and then you're going to reverse it. Remember how we started with the right yeah, strand yeah, going yeah. over the top of the four? Then you're gonna do the left strand over the top of the four. The right strand then goes over the tail, and mm -hmm. then under the four and then mm -hmm. up through the loop. Do I tighten this basically... all the way to the No, edge? okay, so what, you should leave a little bit of space. Leave like two inches or so. We're gonna be repeating this process, but if you could imagine, like once you pull this knot tight, it's gonna like kind of encapsulate those four center strands. Yes. Then we're gonna create like puffy knot sections. So if you could imagine like you creating another one of those knots, but leaving like some of the strand out so it kind of like creates a circle. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, okay. So this is what we just did like once and then twice. That counts as one finished knot. That's, yes, that's one knot. So that will hold securely there. And then you're gonna do the same exact process again, about maybe like an inch and a half or two inches down from the, the knot you just created. But mm -hmm. leave like, leave like a little bit of excess string in there so it fluffs out on the, on the, on the sides. Yeah. Yeah, so then you're literally just going to be repeating that process until you have the length of your shelf section. And keep in mind that these macrame sections are going to meet up in the middle, the top middle. Okay. Um, so you're going to want them long enough to kind of, it's going to look kind of like a triangle. Can you picture that? Like the board is the bottom and the strings yes. are the left and right. Yes, of the triangle. Perfect. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. So then you're just gonna, re so it kind of creates almost like a circle. There's like four strands in the middle and then your left and right strands are the outside of the circle. Yeah, it's like an eight with four strings going down its middle. Well, sorry, because yes, I've made exactly. two loops, it's an eight. Yeah, because see, you're even ahead of me. We're basically going to want to then connect this to the two sides, once you're done macrame them, will be connected to that brass ring in the middle. And that's what will then attach to the nail on the wall. Okay, okay. Thanks for picking an easy one, because I feel like this is a huge confidence boost that it's going so well. Yeah, I did not, I was like, it will be so hard to explain. Plus, honestly, I'm not the best macrame -er. Like, <laughs> I know how to do simple macrame. Uh -huh. So I was like, I'll do a little simple macrame and if your loops aren't the same size either either it doesn't matter but i try i'm trying to make them look a little bit uniform that way me too they look fine the nice thing about this one is like if you're it's really easy to adjust the loop sizes so yes that the exactly stay the same you know i just made this up in my head like i did like this is just like something i thought would be like nice for this project love it you're dreaming in macrame Now, I don't exactly have a method for attaching this to the ring. Like, okay. it basically just needs to be attached. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like something that could be good is taking all six strands, maybe take all six strands and then wrap them around the ring, leaving about an inch of space from your last knot in the ring. Okay. kind of folding it Makes over sense. and then taking one of your longer strands and then wrapping it around all of the strands. Does that make sense? Oh. So it kind of will like tightly like wrap all of those strands inside 
um, of like a coil. I'm cool with that. How do you finish it when you do it that way? Um, you just want to do like a simple little knot. So just kind of wrap it around like five times or six times until you reach that knot and then wrap it around the strings and your finger and then right. pull the strand through the loop that your finger created. Yeah. To, to create a knot. For it. I think I got and it. Then, yeah, and then once that's all done, that, then you can cut, I would probably glue it and then maybe leave it for a while, let it dry, and then just cut off all the tails. Okay. If you could imagine, like pull your pull your ring up as if it was on the wall and then twist it, uh -huh. like how it would be hanging. See how the see how it kind of turns a little bit so that you could see yeah. those circles? So that's kind of gonna be the Aww. that's kind of what it's gonna look like as one side of the shelf. I love it. Yay. I mean, so I guess that finishes off my project. Then you would just basically repeat the same exact steps on the other side, attach it to the ring, and you would be done. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, well then I guess yeah. that I'll let you work on this one off camera, and then we'll FaceTime tomorrow, and I'll see what you created. Okay. Bye-bye. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Oh my gosh, your background's so pretty always. I love all those colors hanging there with your purple sweater as well. Thank you. Um, I feel like you definitely like got this because I feel like when we talked last, which was a couple of days ago, you kind of understood all of the directions that I was giving, which is great because I feel like macrame could be a little bit challenging to teach, I guess, on just verbally. Like that's definitely something you need to see. Which people always actually laugh at me in my videos when I say that because I'm like, okay, you guys, like, I'm not going to talk right now because you actually kind of just need to see what I'm doing because I have no idea how to explain it. So that's, whenever I do macrame, it's always like that. Just, uh, as you can see here, it's pretty self-explanatory. That is exactly it. Uh-huh. As you can see here, it's pretty self-explanatory, which is what I always say. I want to see yours first, I guess. Okay. I'm trying to, like, judge it up a little as to, um, Yes, 100%. I did the same. <laughs> oh my gosh, yours looks so good. Thank you, Drew. Thank you for teaching me. This might not be its final resting spot, but I did put some decor on it with a nice mirror, little air plant. It looks so cute. See, your ring, your ring is like the, exactly what you created was what I was picturing in my head. I actually like yours a lot more than mine. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll show I'll show you mine right now. So you so here's mine right here. But see how the ring is just like it's just oversized looking. It's just a it's just like a little too big. Like yours is the perfect size, and mine's just a little bigger than I would want it to be. Do you have any tips for like making it more secure to the wall? Um, I feel like I feel like probably the best one would just to be put to put some command like mounting strips on the back side of that shelf piece, just so that. Like, do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, I would probably put some, like two or three of those just on that like th like the thin strip on the back just to make sure that it's like secured yeah. to the wall because I definitely feel like the weight can be held from the nail as long as you're not putting like books and books and books on top of it. All right, you guys. Well, I guess that's really all for today's video. If you have not already checked out Wendy, you must subscribe to her channel. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already found her channel before because she creates such incredible videos. And not only are your videos like super informational, I also love the concepts that you do. Like how you just did that Beyonce video. Like your concepts are like full concepts. Thanks, Drew. Yeah, we try out here. We try to stay inspired. Make well, more clothes and have fun. You do a really good job at it, Wendy. I love it. <laughs> so everyone make sure to subscribe to Wendy and also check out her video because she actually um, over on her channel We did a or I guess we kind of did but she kind of also mainly did a full-on entryway makeover Where I tried to recreate a project that she taught me how to create verbally Yes, now both of us have new skills Exactly That's how easy that was I know. And you got the benefit of watching while we were not watching each other. All right. Well, thank you, Wendy, so much for being on my channel today. And I will see you hopefully soon. I know. That would be nice. I know. I need to go to LA again soon. Yes. Whenever you come, just let me know. I'll be here. Okay. Waiting. Patiently. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.